here's all I ask. All I ask for this is Cam Johnson, please want to sign and come to Detroit, reunite with your old coach, Monty Williams, Brooklyn. Please don't want him. Please don't match that offer sheet because I think we are going to be submitting an offer sheet when free agency starts to roll around. And of course, it depends on what happens with the draft, what trades are available, different things of that nature. But Cam Johnson is the perfect, I mean, the perfect free agent fit. Cam Johnson, along with, honestly, Jeremy Grant. But anyways, and we're linked to both of them. But in this video, we are going to be talking about Cam Johnson. I fell in love with this guy and the shooting stroke that he had all the way back to college. All right, you go all the way back to college. You go to North Carolina, not Pitt, but North Carolina was when I really started watching him. And all of a sudden, I was just like, I have absolutely fallen in love with this guy. Like, how is this guy not a higher draft pick possibility? Because when I was watching him, I get it. There's a level of, um, what's the word I want to use? Athletic ability. But then he ended up going 11, which it makes sense. That made sense for him. But the Pistons are all in on trying to go for Cam Johnson. And here's here's what we're saying. Here's what we're saying. Um, the, the, the Brooklyn Nets are quietly expressing confidence. Johnson will re-sign with them, or at least they will match any external offer sheet they need to match to keep him. Stay tuned if that leads to a salary dumping move or two from Brooklyn to create additional play payroll flexibility. So they're a little cash strapped right now. You know who's not cash strapped? the Detroit Pistons. So we could absolutely go in there and get him. But the question we have to ask ourselves is what are we getting in a player like Cam Johnson? Let's just jump into the stats for a second. Cam Johnson is, is a guy that over his career has averaged 11.3 points. And I know what you're thinking. Like that's not a lot of points. He spent that in Phoenix. Okay. With Devin Booker, with Chris Paul, with Deandre Ayton, he was legitimately just a three and D guy. That's all he did. He was not asked to create in any way, shape or form when he did. And you saw those limited times where he was able to, he did well, especially in the last few years, but his rookie year was 8.8 .8 points. His second year was 9.6. And then in 21, 22, he popped up a little bit. He started averaging 12.5 points. Then in 22, 23, 13.9 with Phoenix. He was averaging 13.9. But here's what we need to look at for a second. In Brooklyn, he went there for 15 games. They kept winning because he's a good player and other reasons. All right. In the Kevin Durant trade, he gets shipped over to Brooklyn and he starts playing a more prominent role. In that more prominent role, 25 games, 25 starts. 31, 30.8 30 minutes per game. He shoots 47% from the field. He stays at a 37.2% clip from three point percentage. He's a 39.3% uh, three point percent career shooter. Okay. So he adjusted pretty well to the extra role that he had on there. He continued rebounding the ball at five a clip, even better than he was before. 2.1 assists. Um, only one turnover a game. So he had a two to one assist to turnover ratio and he averaged 16.6 points. What he did was prove that when he's the number three or number two scoring option, he has the ability to do that. He started making more plays like this is exciting. This is what you want as a Pistons fan. Now, his defense and a defensive metric is considerably better than what we currently have on the roster. And the reason that he's able to do that, he's 6'8", he's 210 pounds. He's not small. He's not a ridiculous athlete. He's not. I'm never going to say he is. I will never say he is. But just hold on here for a second. Because what he was is he's he has enough lateral movement to stick with threes, even some twos but he has enough size and height to be able to play at the four position as well. In fact, he mostly is going to play at the four position. He's very similar in size to bogey, maybe a little bit 
a little bit. He presents himself as bigger. Let me put it that way. It's wingspan, whatever that looks like. He presents as bigger. So offensively, he doesn't give you everything bogey does. I understand that. All right. But he could they could play next to each other. Defensively, he improves this team. He's the best. He would immediately become the best defensive wing we have on the team with the Pistons. That's where Bogdanovich struggles. Bogdanovich is a better pure scorer, but I believe Cam Johnson could get there. Also, Bogey is what, 33, 34 years old? Whereas Cam Johnson's 27. So when we start, and now we're getting later into the video, so now we have to start talking about different things and different possibilities. Now there's rumors that the Pistons are linked to a trade with um, with uh, Dallas, the Mavericks. Wow, I brain farted there for a second. So I just like, let's just play this out. Let's say everything goes the way we want. Everything happens. You are able to, on draft night, you are able to trade the number um, 10 pick. You, you get the number 10 pick, you get Tim Hardaway. You give up, bogey. All right, I don't like giving up bogey. Don't get me wrong. Like for the year he was in Detroit, that was really, real nice watching him play. Um, year and a half. Anyways, um, it was really nice watching him play an offense, like the pure score that he is. But if you have a guy, and I don't think he's going to fall to 10, but if you have a guy like Taylor Hendricks that falls to that position, uh-oh, you get your 3 and D player. So you, you lose bogey, but you get your second guard off the bench or your first guard off the bench in Tim Hardaway Jr., and then that that allows some good help for, you know, guy. And I, I would I would keep Hardaway on the on the bench. I understand he might be better than Ivy at this stage in his career, but I don't know if he will be next year because Ivy was coming on strong. So you have a three guard rotation there with Ivy, Cade and Tim Hardaway Jr. You've got um, your two draft picks, which maybe are Cam Whitmore, maybe Taylor Hendricks at five and ten. How perfect would that be? And then you go out and you get Cam Johnson as a restricted free agent. All of a sudden, you have created yourself. You've gotten three players in Hardaway Jr., pretty good defender. Cam Johnson, above average defender. Taylor Hendrick projects as to be a very good defender with his wingspan, his length, um, and a 3 and D type guy. All of a sudden, you've completely transformed your roster in your weak area, and you're just like, oh, Okay, that was a pretty good offseason. You still have Cade. You still have Ivy. You still have your bigs. I don't know what that looks like. Now there's rumors about Isaiah Stewart. That's going to be a totally different video. Uh, but, man, oh, man, this is it's rumor season in the NBA. I think it's going to be really hard to get Cam Johnson. I think it's going to be really hard. I think you're going to be able to go get a guy like Jeremy Grant easier because he's an unrestricted free agent. I don't think Portland quite knows what they want to do. They'll know by then after the draft and all that kind of stuff. I'm just saying Cam Johnson would be an awesome fit. I don't know if the Nets let him go, but let's mm, let's hope that they do. All right. Hey, let me know what you think. Do you like Cam Johnson as a fit to the Pistons? In the background here, we got our new uh, wall, Canvas Mall. Um, they sent us some free stuff. So we want to give a shout out to them. There's a link for them in the bottom, which is great. Uh, so that line is back there roaring, ready to get you, uh, just like the Pistons. All right, we'll see you on the next one. Bye, everybody.